I am generally interested in how uh, large groups accomplish tasks. As societies increase in size, one way that they can maintain and even increase efficiency is by dividing labor. When they divide labor, uh, certain individuals in that society can uh, become experts at performing jobs. But a lot of these jobs can actually be accomplished by individuals going out and agreeing on an overarching goal, but working independently to accomplish that goal. So for example, a group of farmers can agree that they want to go out and pick all the ripe apples in an orchard by the end of the day. and. Um, and go out and work totally independently without any communication between them and still accomplish that goal. But what about jobs that have to be accomplished by a group? How do individuals in a society come together to form a group and then perform a task as a group? So to explore this question, I use honeybees as my model society. Honeybees have a division of labor where the youngest bees um, are the nurses and they perform all the jobs inside the colony, like taking care of all the developing bees. The oldest bees, on the other hand, are foragers, and they go out and they accomplish, um, they uh, are, <laughs> sorry, are um, going out and collecting all the food for the colony. There's a job in the, in the honeybee society, however, that requires, that I feel requires coordination, and this job is called fanning. This fanning behavior, and all these bees, this group right here, um, this fanning behavior is a thermoregulatory behavior that honeybees perform to keep the colony cool. If the colony temperature rises above 95 degrees Fahrenheit, then the developing bees, or the larvae inside, can die. So a group of bees will come to the opening of the colony, which I have here, and stand there and fan their wings to circulate air and cool the colony down. So not only is this job critical for the survival of the colony, but it has to be accomplished by a group of bees. And I'm curious to know whether they're communicating to perform this task. So um, uh, my research thus far has indicated that they are communicating. I have found that honeybees that are being heated when they're in small groups are more likely to fan than bees when they're by themselves. I also found that honeybees are more likely to fan when they are in the presence of a larvae compared to when they are by, um, being heated by themselves, again. So I do think they are communicating, but the social context is actually changing this behavior. And I need to figure out why and what's going on. So to explore this behavior a little bit more, I want to look at the physiological mechanisms that underlie this behavior. Neurotransmitters are molecules, oh, sorry, every uh, animal, every behavior that we see an animal perform happens because of a complex set of chemical reactions that happen inside the animal's body. Neurotransmitters are molecules that our nerve cells use to communicate with each other, and they've been implicated in uh, honeybee behavior and division of labor, but have yet to be explored in the context of this fanning behavior. So in order to explore this a little bit more, I've set up a collaboration with Dr. Colin Brent at the USDA in Arizona, who is an expert at analyzing these neurotransmitters in honeybees specifically. If I were awarded the Dean's Research Grant, I would be able to travel to Arizona and perform research exploring fanning a little bit more. Um, so uh, understanding the physiological mechanisms, especially in the context of neurotransmitters, is really important because neurotransmitters are the same in every animal group. We have them, so do honeybees. And so this will allow us to explore the social behavior um, from an evolutionary standpoint. Um, uh, exploring the uh, fanning behavior also and how these societies come together and form groups uh, can give us an idea of how societies and groups are dealing with stressors, um, especially when, the, uh, when dealing with the stressor has to be accomplished by a group and uh, we assume that we want those, uh, that task to be as efficient as possible, especially when the group uh, depends on it. And with that, I would love to thank you for your time. Thank you to, to the Dean and Graduate Committee. And thank you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what specifically, what neurotransmitters are you, are you looking at? There are several neurotransmitters. So um, there's a neurotransmitter, uh, so dopamine. <laughs> 
and uh, serotonin are two neurotransmitters that uh, honeybees and humans actually have. There's a neurotransmitter, octopamine, that, are sp that is specific for invertebrates that have, has, mo a lot of the research has been done on since it was new and it was novel. Um, that it ha has really been the one that has emerged as the big one that plays a big role in uh, honeybee behavior in particular. But I want to look at um, all of them. I want to look at those three and um, uh, probably acetylcholine as 